It's time for a Get a Job segment with Gail Crookshank from the Greater St. Cloud Development Corporation. She's the talent director there. Gail, thanks for being here. Good morning. All right, so we try to solve all the workforce. <laughs> exactly. and, you know, when we started doing this stuff, I think it was all about trying to get people jobs and to help them out. And I feel like it's kind of switched a little bit mm -hmm. because it's employers trying to retain and get employees because there's still that workforce shortage. There is. There is, absolutely. I mean, there is just around 6,500 jobs on JobSpot today. And, and again, that's three counties. That is just right here in our immediate area. So it's just nuts. And, you know, although it is still a job seekers market, you still have to, as a job seeker, ensure that that employer thinks you're the best and you are the chosen candidate. And you still need to sell yourself as I'm the best candidate for the role that you're looking for. You got to come up with that confidence or at least mm -hmm. fake it before you make it. <laughs> exactly. One or the other or both if you can pull that off. Yeah. So we've got interview tips that can separate you from the competition. Where we, do you start here? We do. Well, and I think where I like to tell people to start is it doesn't matter if it's a phone interview, a face-to-face -face interview, you have to show your enthusiasm for that job, you know, for that type of industry, for why did you apply to this job? You have to tell, show that employer that you are really passionate about why you applied, where you see yourself fitting within this company, and, and highlighting what you can bring to that organization. You know, you need to stand out. Um, and again, show that you're committed to this role. You know, sometimes people will think, well, I'm just, it's just a job. I don't care. I'm just going to get, get a paycheck and move on. You need to change that mindset. You need to show that this is where I want to be. Even if it's a part-time thing, it doesn't matter. You still need to enjoy what you do. I tell everybody, I mean, we spend more time at our jobs than we do doing anything else for the most part. So you got to enjoy what you do and you got to. You know, it has to work for you. It's good to have that passion for it. Mm -hmm. um, and at the very least, you can't hate it. Right. So you, you can't get it because you're, you're just not going to either do a good job mm -hmm. or stay there long. Yep. So you really have to get into a position where you don't hate it. Um, that, you that's have what to I've, see the benefits. I mean, every I tell people, every single job you work, no matter if it was part-time at McDonald's to CEO of X company, you walked away with something that helped form who you are. And hopefully some experiences that will help you in your next stop, wherever that might be. Um, and again, even I reflect on some of my jobs and it's, you know, maybe it's even as much as I won't do that when I'm a manager or a leader or, you know, I really liked how this person did this, that kind of thing. So there is always something to learn from every job that you have. And that's why as you interview, you still should highlight those experiences and those takeaways, even if they're not in the same industry or the same type of job, because as you and I talk about transferable skills, almost every other chat, it's, they are real and you can apply them to whatever industry you want to pursue. Gail, what kind of vision should you have? If, if, if you say you should have a vision for what mm -hmm. you want to do in that particular job you're applying for, how do you construct that vision? Well, I think it takes some time to say, okay, I'm interested in this job. Where would I like to see it go? You know, and it doesn't always end up totally within one company, but it's that looking forward to say, okay, if I'm in X job, now I want to work my way towards this. And again, you don't want to sound like you're just here to job jump and job up and, and all of that, but you want to show that you see a future doing that work or that type of work or, um, you know, that sort of thing. So it's a matter of just giving some thought to where would you like to see the job that you're currently applying to move to within the proper amount of time. So it's not for those job seekers that come in and say, okay, I want to do this for 90 days and then I want to move up to CEO of the company kind of thing, you know, which some people have that thought and you have to be realistic, but you also have to see a future and what will this job lead to and hopefully within that same company. How do you know if your vision aligns with that company's vision? Well, I always say spend some time on their uh, their website, the company website. Um, most companies do a really good job of depicting what their visions and culture and what their goals are. 
um, and talk to people ahead of time. You know, if you know somebody at that company or ask questions of the um, individual that called you, you know, to do an initial screening interview, it's important to, again, find that alignment and then try and, again, highlight those things when you're going through the interview process. Um, it just shows that you will fit within the organization, which is really the goal of any employer. It's not all about skill. It's probably more about culture and fit right now. They'll teach you skills that you don't know. Gail, how can you become boastful and yet not arrogant? <laughs> it is, I mean, that's a fine line. I mean, you have to, you want to brag about yourself. You want to highlight the accomplishments that you've had, but you also can't sound like I did it all myself. Um, I think it's key to show um, teamwork, engagement, how you as your team did this, so my team a achieved this, or it's okay to call out that I you know, increase revenue by this percentage, but it's not sounding like they only have grown as a company because of me, um, you know, and not be truthful with what you're sharing, I guess, is the other thing. Don't stretch that truth just to make it sound more impressive. Make sure you can back up what you have accomplished because you probably have accomplished a lot and you should brag a little bit but again make sure it's truthful and make it make sure it really aligns with again how you did it as a team how you work together what vision you saw how you communicated your ideas to your supervisor you know i think all of that speaks to you're motivated you did some great things but you also went the right channels you um, worked as a group that sort of thing to kind of show that you're in a you were an important part of the team right but yet yep. you worked as a team as opposed to I did this all on my own. Yeah, because people want to see as an employer that, wow, they have ambition. They have initiative. They they want to see things grow or succeed. And But again, it's making sure you're working through the right chains, channels to follow that either company protocol or just that team protocol. Gail, what questions should people be prepared to answer in interviews? Um, I think, well, first, obviously, those basic interview questions, but you have to be able to talk about what maybe didn't go so well. Um, if you have gaps in your employment, you have to be prepared to talk about that. Um, and again, use that gap in your employment to say, what did you do during that time to, again, prepare yourself for this job you're applying to? Um, you know, and if it was a negative situation, a negative environment, you know, share the, you know, the specifics, but be concise, be positive. If you had a negative work supervisor or experience, you know, don't find yourself bad mouthing, you know, speaking negative of somebody during an interview. It's just not the right way to go about it. I appreciate some people have very difficult work experiences, but look at the few things that you could take from it in a positive way. And again, you never know who knows who, right? So you don't want to say, oh, this boss was absolutely terrible. It might be this boss's relative, friend, coworker. you know, you just never know. And so keep it short, keep it concise, be accurate again, um, but don't dwell on any of that. And then really highlight your successes on a plus side. You know, what did you accomplish at this job? You know, how can what you accomplished at your previous job help you in the job that you're applying to. You know, a lot of times there's a lot of pressure involved with an interview mm -hmm. and therefore you might feel that pressure to be somebody that you're not. Mm -hmm. How can you relax and illustrate who you really are? And that's exactly a, a great point. You, you have to show your personality. You have to show what motivates you, you know, and it's okay to say, I really work great, the best in this type of environment. It helps that employer say, wow, I, we align with that. Or maybe they would work better with this supervisor or in this role instead of the role they maybe initially applied to. You need to show what is going to drive you. You need to show that personality, show that smile. Again, I always tell people, even if you're interviewing over the phone, they can see your personality. They can see your excitement or not. And so it's it's critical to, to be able to reflect your personality 
in your interview, um, you want to be real. You know, it's it's a matter of you always want to show who you are because you want to fit in that organization just as much as they want you to fit within that try, organization. Try to make a connection with the person doing exactly. the interview. Exactly. Easier said than done. But again, if you're doing your homework as a job seeker, you'll see what things are most important to those employers. If you know somebody that knows your interviewer, you know, find out, again, what connects with them. Um, it really, anytime you can make a personal connection or just a connection of how you work or what you think, it always gives you that leg up. Sure. Uh, if people do want to find out more about some tips for job interviews mm -hmm. or anything else that they can find, especially like job openings, mm -hmm. um, what website should they go to? Um, go to www.stcloudshines.com. And within that, you will find JobSpot, which highlights the 6,500 jobs I mentioned earlier, but also a bunch of interview tips. And when you asked about questions earlier, Jay, there's one document in there that has like 65 interview questions, you know, that can just help you think about, oh, I never thought I might get asked that, you know, or that's good to think about just so you are feeling prepared. Um, and to learn more from an employer side, um, if there's a lot of employer information on our GSDC website, which is greaterstcloud.com. Excellent. Gail, thanks for coming in. Thank you. Have a great day. You too. Gail Crook, Shanktown Director, Greater St. Cloud Development Corporation. This has been our Get a Job segment every month, the third Monday of the month.